Good morning. All right, I just want to say good morning again, and I would like to welcome all of our visitors, if we have any in the sanctuary with us this morning. Amen. Um, if not, I'll go ahead and get into our reminders. First reminder is to please silence all of your electronic devices at this time. Airplane mode, silence, whatever you say is best to you, just turn it off. Um, and then also about our random acts of kindness cards in the back on the welcome bar. Um, this is a way that we can be a blessing to someone and then also um, invite them into our church. Amen. All right. And then I also want to remind you guys to follow us on all of our social media platforms. Um, we have quite a few. The first one is njcferguson.org. And then we're on Facebook at New Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church, Ferguson. Then on Twitter, we are NJMBC Ferguson. On Instagram, we're at New Jerusalem um, NBC 1977. On YouTube, we are New Jerusalem NBC 1977. And on TikTok, New Jerusalem NBC. Amen. Okay. And then I also want to remind you guys about the breakfast that we have every morning. It starts at 8.30. It ends at 8.58 a.m. Um, if you would like to partake in that, please arrive in between those times. And then, if you have not met with Pastor and Lady Adams for the meeting, um, please sign up um, on the sign-up sheet um, for the slot that you are available. And then let's get into our upcoming events. So, um, Bible study takes place every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Dinner is provided. Um, join us for a fantastic Bible study. If you have any questions, that is a great time to ask. Um, February is Black History Month. Um, everybody should have received those bracelets. If you have not or if you don't have one, please just raise your hand and then the ushers will bring you one. And so today um, we ask everyone to wear three colors, red, yellow, and green. Um, those are the colors of the African flag. Next Sunday, um, February 25th, we ask that you wear your African attire. All right, now we're going to get into our birthdays. Um, as this is another reminder, too, for next month, please turn in your birthdays or your special occasions. Uh, February 25th is the cutoff. Um, so on February 24th, we are celebrating Sister Aliana's birthday. Amen. <laughs> and um, also on the March 10th, we'll have the church's 47th anniversary. And then we'll be celebrating that at 3 p.m. Um, we're asking that all New Jerusalem family be in attendance to support the church. We're also asking that each family um, is asked to give $250, $250, um, or whatever the Lord places on your heart. Um, you can split the payment up, and then you can also pay through the cash app, the veil, um, and then let in the memo specify that that's what you're giving for. And then we're going to get into our tithes and offerings. Alrighty, so we have several ways to give. First up, we have our ushers coming through now to collect. We also have um, the cash app, which is dollar sign New Jerusalem 1977. Again, that's cash app New Jerusalem 1977. Or you may give on the Zelle app with the phone number is 314-368-7378. Again, on Zelle, that is 314-368-7378. Amen. All righty. While we're waiting on that, I'm going to ask Minister Akira to come up and pray over all that was given. Amen. All right.
everybody been blessed to give? Amen, amen. Man, that's about to pray. Gracious and heavenly Father, Lord, we want to thank you, God. We want to thank you for giving us the ability, Lord, to give back to you as your word has commanded to uh, for us to do, Lord, a, a tithe and an offering, Lord. So we thank you for for just allowing us to, to do that, Lord. And we ask that you would take this seed that we have given to you, Lord, and you will multiply it, Lord, and you will grow it and use it for the purpose of your kingdom. These blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name, and we all say together, amen. All right, amen. You all, uh, y'all ready for the word? Are y'all sure y'all ready? Amen, amen. You all, we want to show reverence to where reverence is due and honor to where the honor is due. So we're going to ask our pastor to come up and give us a, a obviously he's going to give us a message because I ain't, I ain't preaching to be, you know, so he's going he to definitely deliver the message. But we want to just show, you know, just respect and honor to our man of God. So if you all can, if you can, stand on your feet and just, just clap for him as he's on his way in because he had to prepare this for us through this week. Amen. Amen. Ooh. My God. Bring bring me down a little bit, please. One, two, uh, I think that's okay. That's how how does that sound to you all? Is it is it loud out there or is it uh is it good? Okay. Okay. Good, 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 good. To God be the glory. You all uh Things move so many different ways, always trying to figure out uh, exactly what we're doing. And, and um, we were blessed this week. We went to uh, Friendly Temple for a, a concert. They had the Legends Tour concert here. Uh, and I had an opportunity to take my, my daughters for the concert I heard my son say, mm-hmm. He was still at work. It was doing working hours for him. Well, you need to keep up. <laughs> um, but there, there's a brother by the name of uh, Minister Timothy Whitley who came and he helped us set up our sound and our all of the systems and, and all of that. Um, bro, uh, Pastor Donnie McClurkin was there, Bishop, Bishop Hezekiah Walker, uh, Minister Anthony Brown, Fred Hammond, uh, and I believe Marvin Sapp was supposed to be here, but there was something that came up that he wasn't able to make it. But they had this grand stage set up, and I mean, the production was massive. You go... You all just have to imagine how many people were there. Um, and we were able to sit right behind the, the sound booth that they were working the sound and all of the equipment and all of the cameras. And I, I don't know how many cameras uh, Friendly has set up in the auditorium and in the overflow and all of that. But man, the sound kept ringing and uh, the artists kept looking at the mic like, come on, y'all, you know, fix this. And uh, every time they gave Donnie McClurkin the mic, his mic wouldn't work. And, you know, he started tap dancing while they was waiting to get it done. Y you know, different things. And, and the, like I said, the, the, the gentleman who came and helped us set up all of this stuff and told us which board to get, he's running up and down the steps, you know, from the, the balcony down to the stage to try to fix it. And what I thought about was how irritated I get when things are not working properly. And I'm wondering, Lord, what are we doing wrong? What's wrong with our system? And what I found out is it ain't just our system. I don't think there is, or at least the last time we checked, um, in the African-American church, Friendly Temple is the largest church in the city of St. Louis in the greater metropolitan area. Last count that, that they had was uh, over 13,000 members. Yeah, 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 they doing it like that. But even with all of that, they still got problems with they sound. They still got problems with they mics. 
They still got problems with their displays. Right now, you know, the idea is that you all are supposed to be able to see um, the different scriptures and the announcements and all of that stuff, and it ain't working. I sent the message to uh, Minister Tim saying, I need you to come out here and take a look at this, and I'm waiting on him to get back to us on the date that he has available. But when I saw what he was dealing with there and all of that, I said, okay, I understand. It's easy for us to get in our feelings when you're looking at your stuff and you think that you're the only one dealing with something in your house, the only one dealing with something on your job, the only y'all the only one who got a problem with your car and a problem with your husband and your wife and your kids and you you know you walk in and everybody say how you doing on it you smile you know hoping that nobody knows how you really feel but i thank god who gives us the victory when it's all said and done <laughs> you all uh, uh I, I was checking on Lady Adams, um, we, we had just been saying it has been months since we've had to, to be in the hospital and um, we, we see so many different improvements in her health and all of these different things and we have certainly been thanking God for it. And this morning uh, while she was in the office, she said, I need you. She called me and I, I, I came in and she said, I'm not feeling well. I, I, I'm feeling really faint right now. Uh, and you all, uh, I'm only telling you this because I, I want you to know how quick our mind can go to different things and, and get off of what God is doing. Satan is going to try to attack you the best way that he can every chance he gets. And if I can tell you the truth, I get, I get my best sleep between Saturday night and Sunday morning. I mean, that bed is so hard to let go on Sundays. I get up any other day of the week, you know, sometimes 6 o'clock, 6.30, just different times, and I can get up and, and just be good. A cup of coffee, and I'm ready to go. Sunday morning, I'm dragging. Lord, if, ooh, if I could just get 15 more minutes, just 15 more minutes, hit the snooze button different little, I mean, little things aggravate me to no end on Sunday morning. Satan would love to get me off my, quote unquote, off my game. When we came in, God bless you, when we came in and she said she wasn't feeling well and we, uh, I, I, uh, my sister came over, checked her sugar and, and, and uh, all of that. And then I walked out of the room. And I went and I sat down in the office and I'm going over my notes. And I just believe, I, I won't say it was God, I just say I believe. The Holy Spirit said, she's, she's not feeling well. You went over there, you talked to her, uh, you gave her some juice. You didn't pray. You in the church, your wife is ill, and you didn't pray. That never crossed your mind that Let's go into prayer. You also, I, I walk back through the hallway, get over to there. Mother Adams comes in and she says, have we prayed? I said, well, actually, we was just coming to do that. All of this to say, I know what I'm feeling. I know what I'm going through. And I see how often we can discount God even in his own place I'm looking I, I'm, I'm irritated because of the production you all understand what I'm saying this is what we should be doing right now this is this you know where is everybody at how come the music ain't ain't right we don't have the the choir ready we don't have the praise team ready we don't have the screens ready God said the word is ready everything is leading up to the main thing so why don't we keep the main thing the main thing that's what's most important in all of this so um, again I, I'm, I'm just extremely grateful uh, today is the 18th 
and if the Lord will, in one week the wife and I will celebrate our 22nd wedding anniversary. <laughs> That's on next Sunday, so uh, uh, I, I don't know what all we are going to plan, and sometimes it, it's really up to how she feels. Uh, I tried on Wednesday to take her somewhere and she wasn't feeling well and I tried on Thursday and she wasn't feeling well and uh, we, we, we've been doing the meetings. So uh, first I want to say thank all those who have been uh, diligent in meeting us for those meetings. They have been very productive. Uh, they are doing exactly what we're asking them to do. Mother Adams has the sign up sheet in the back for all of those. We want to meet with every um, I want to say every adult member, but even uh, if, if we can get, I believe, those 16 and up that are able, and I understand that that might mean uh, parents would have to bring them, but um, we, we would love to even talk with our adolescents because I'm grateful for the youth that God is bringing, and they are very important. And we want to make sure that everybody, oh God, what just happened there? That everybody is included in the movement and, and how we are moving and the work that's happening. Amen. So uh, with that being said, when you all leave out today, please uh, stop and, and see Mother Adam. She has that sign up sheet. Um, Last, uh, last announcement, and, and this is, uh, I, I know, very impromptu, but we received a phone call from Archbishop Thompson at Leonard Baptist. They are having their consecration service on today. Uh, uh, I think this is an annual thing that they do, but he asked me if, if we would come and bring a selection, and uh, he asked me for remarks. So I'm just asking the church for all those who might be available. That service is at 3.30. That is 1100 North Compton Avenue, St. Louis, Missouri. That is Leonard Missionary Baptist Church. If you Google it, you can uh, just tap on the link for directions for those who may not know exactly where it's at. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's today at 3.30. We all know that uh, Archbishop Thompson and Leonard have been with us for years um, and he has been very instrumental in my ministerial development he did my uh, my ordination service uh, every year from the beginning he has opened the uh, pastoral anniversary and he will be doing the same on this year so um, whenever he calls I do my best to answer amen um, so, again, I understand that this is very last minute. All of you all might have plans, but for those who don't and, and that are able to come, we would love to see you, but we're going to go and represent because he called. Amen? All right. Well, uh, y'all, uh, where's she at? Where's she at? Where's Ollie? Is she out there? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, are we doing, are we doing the children's church today? I need to know. Yes, I don't know. Somebody tell me. I just need to know if we need to release them now. No. Okay. All right. Good. 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 Uh. No. She said no. I'm still in my feelings, y'all. My baby leaving me today. She's going. Uh, I thank God for, for work. Uh, my, my children, my girls own a cake company that they inherited from their mom. And uh, she has been solicited to fly to Denver for a wedding. They asked them to do the wedding cake. <laughs> so somebody uh, saw their work and... Uh, they all went up to Denver last year for a um, a baby shower, and they did all the cakes and treats, and whoever was there saw their work and asked them uh, if they flew them up 
and took care of their lodging would they um, take care of their wedding. So I'm grateful that somebody saw their work and, and saw the excellence in their work, and now they are traveling for work. So I'm grateful for that. Um, but this is probably, I think, the first birthday that she's going to be away from us and uh, anniversary. Her birthday is on the 24th, anniversary on the 25th. I remember celebrating our anniversary in DePaul Hospital the day after she was born. At that time, she was uh, in one of those, I don't know what you call them. She, uh, she had jaundice when she was born, and they had her under that light. Uh, and I remember for our anniversary being there with her, praying that God would bring her through it, and he did. And uh, I'm asking him to bring her back, bring her back safe and sound when, uh, when she gets to Denver. She kept looking at me yesterday. Oh, Dad, would you stop it? Not a big deal. It's a big deal for me. All right, we're going to keep everybody in prayer. There, there's, there's been so much that's happening. Um, death has been all around us all week long. Um, the young man uh, who was killed on New Halls Ferry is the brother-in-law of Sister Sharon Hardiman, and we attended that memorial service on yesterday. Uh, you all, that place was packed. Uh, there, there wasn't standing room. They, they had to try to move us to the overflow in the basement and there were so many technical problems and difficulties with that. Um, my cousin, uh, Alfonso Sparkman, his daughter was killed this week. Uh, I wanna say she's 22. 23 years old, somewhere around there. Not sure what all happened with that. Uh, and in reality, it doesn't matter. Death is death. Uh, all we can do is just be in prayer. Uh, Satan is trying to attack our youth, our young adults, uh, and he, he's doing a good job at it. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy but I thank God that he has given us life. And for those who have been able to make it through, who have came through, I'm grateful to see Mother Johnson here this morning. Amen. Amen. She has been going through, but God has kept her. And, and I'm, you know, she was able to walk in. Amen. Nobody had to roll her in or, or, or anything like that. So, uh, all right, let's, let's go. I could, we, we could just keep talking. I, I don't need to prolong the time. Uh, you all get your Bibles. And um, if y'all want to look at the screen, you can. Uh, ain't nothing on it. <laughs> get your Bibles. Let's, uh, which one do we want to read first? Mm. Let's go to 1 Kings. 1 Kings Chapter 17, we're going to read verse 8 through 16. Uh, this morning, uh, the majority of the reading will be from the King James. We only have one that we'll read from the Amplified. 1 Kings 17, verse 8 through 16. For all those who are able, we ask that you please stand. And once again, we stand to reverence the word of God. Men, men, I, I, I spoke to you all, I'm sorry. I spoke to you all during the last men's meeting about the Iron Sharpens Iron uh, conference that's happening on March the 2nd. I think we have three men who have already paid. Um, it's normally 79. If we do the group, uh, 10 or more, uh, it's, it's 59, which is $49 for the, the conference, $10 for the meal, so the total of 59. Uh, I'm asking all of those men that are able to be with us on March the 2nd uh, to please get with me so that we can get the registration paperwork in and uh, there's a group of churches that we meet with those guys who came with us for the, the Christmas giveaway here all of those churches are combining to make sure that everybody has 10 men or more and so that we can share the group rate uh, there are some 
larger churches, some smaller churches, but we wanted to make sure that everybody was able to take advantage of the group. So what we did was we brought everybody together. Uh, so men, please get with me. I know I think three of us have already paid so far. I just want to make sure that we get everybody in and we get that money turned in. First Kings chapter 17, verse 8 through 16. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belonged to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. This is God talking to um, Elijah. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there. And she was gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her again and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, Fear not, go and do as thou have said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus said the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste. Neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat many days, and the barrel of meal wasted not. Neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. John chapter 6, verse 5 through 13. St. John chapter 6, verse 5 through 13. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company coming to him, he said unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself already knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take even a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, There is a lad here, which have five barley loaves and two small fishes. But what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, when he prayed over it, he distributed to the disciples and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes as much as they would. And when they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. We don't want to waste. Therefore they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. God bless the reading, the hearing, and doing of his word. You can be seated. Let's, let's talk from the idea I gave it but God multiplied it. I gave it, but God multiplied it. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you, and, and, and we pray, and, and we should do this prior to uh, not only every service, every different part, and especially, God, as we are getting ready to speak to your people. I pray that right now I, I need prayer. So many things in my mind and in my heart and uh, Lord, sometimes I do. I really feel the pressure of making the production work. But God, I, I know that we are called to service, not called to a production. I know many of us are, are, are looking to be 
Um, we, we, we are looking to be entertained. We are, we are, uh, but some people, Lord, didn't come for an entertainment, but, but their spirits were down, and, and they were coming to be uplifted, and Lord, I believe there are certain things that I thought would just be so uplifting, and we, we, we caught a snag, but I know that all things work together for the, the good of them who love you and called according to your purpose. God, I, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you right now that uh, where we are deficient, that you would be sufficient. God, you said that you would supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. And, and you told us once upon a time, don't be afraid of the need. There is a necessity for the need. God, so I, I'm just thanking you and I, I'm putting it all in your hands. Lord, I, I'm, I'm going to let you do only what you can do, and I'm going to do only what I can do. But we 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 ask right now, God, that you would move me out of the way, that you would come and step in and uh, allow my mouth to move. But, God, I pray that it's your voice that comes out that the people hear. You said, he that has an ear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying into the church. We give you praise. We give you glory, and we give you all of the honor. In Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we, we, we got a lot of stuff going on. We got a lot of stuff that's happening. We, we, we're, we're moving, and uh, we're, we're not moving at the speed that I want, and I'm calling different people who were supposed to, 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 to get back with me and different folks. Uh, you know, people will do things in front of other folks because it looks good. We had a meeting with the mayor and the chief of police and the, the, the chief of the fire department, who was also the, uh, the acting city manager, and I'm, uh, I'm telling them all the things that we want to do. And uh, you all, they, people are saying, well, you know, don't call the office. Here's my personal number. Give me a call. I've been calling them ever since then. Ain't nobody answered the phone. Ain't, ain't called me back, won't answer a text. Now, what, what I remember in corporate America is when you wanted somebody to do something, you sent them an email, and then you copied their boss on it. That way you make sure that they know that they boss know, and they, they, they move a little bit quicker. Now, what I have noticed in the past is that whenever – God was ready to do something, he moved. So I'm, I'm trying to move when God moves and how he moves and not so much be concerned about my own movement. Because what I don't want to do is move and, and rush people on this side, but this side hasn't moved. In the military, we used to call that hurry up and wait. They would get us all the way there for a, a mission but the bridge wouldn't built for us to go over. We had to wait for the CBs to come over and build the bridge. So th they done hurried us up, you know, woke us up at 2 o'clock in the morning, got us out of bed, ran over here, and we can't go nowhere because the ship hasn't made it to pick us up. You know, hurry up and wait. It doesn't make sense to start looking for all the houses and the money ain't right. It, it doesn't make sense for us to to, to get all of the properties and don't have a way of maintaining them. So I'm just praying, Lord, I know you're going to do this in your own time, but I have to make sure that all of our things are in a row, that we are ready. Many of us have been asking God for blessings, but you ain't ready to receive them. You've been, you've been praying for different things, but you ain't ready yet. Sometimes God is preparing the place for you. But then there are other times when God are preparing you for the place. So I'm, I'm waiting for God to let me know which one we waiting on. Are we waiting on the people or are we waiting on the place? Or are we waiting on both? Sometimes when I look around and I say, God, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing the prophecies 
And you all, I, I appreciate the prophetic movement of God. I appreciate the prophecies. But sometimes, Lord, help me say this right. I, I can only say it how I'm feeling it. And, and we got to be real careful, too, with our feelings because our, our feelings will get us in trouble. Your, your feelings is, is not a barometer of, of how God is doing. God never even really asks us to move according to our feelings. He asks us to move according to his word. When he says, praise me, he didn't say if you feel like it. He said, let everything that have breath. So <laughs> you could be feeling bad, but if you're breathing while you're feeling bad, then you ought to be praising them. But sometimes when I get the prophecies, it's irritating. Can I, can I, can I tell you, can, can I explain that to you? Is there anybody that wants to know why I would be irritated with a prophecy? Is, is there anybody in here that the Bible says wine makes merry and food was made for laughter, but money answers all things. Is there anybody in here that got some bills that, that they're not necessarily past due, but that they're at least due? They may not be past due, but they're at least due. And, and there might be someone who have some that are just a little bit past due, but, you know, it ain't due enough to where they're going to cut it off. There are some things that you would like to do, but because of money, you haven't been able to do it. You know, I'm, I'm looking around the church, and, and you all on the side over here, um, the, the water came down from the snow, and the gutters are hanging over where the, the water built up in it, and the ice was so heavy that it's just leaning over. We need to have these gutters replaced. They're not broke. But they sure could use some fixing. You all understand what I'm saying? There are many different things that we have lights, we have gas, uh, we have water, sewers not backed up. But there are some things that if we had the finances right now, we would do. We need to change out all of these pews and, and, and we're going to redo the entire sanctuary with just chairs. It makes it a little bit more versatile and we could do so much more with the space if we didn't have even the pews here. When you get a, a prophecy, God is getting ready to bless you abundantly in your finances. And you go, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. And you start, man, somebody say that to you, and you start shouting and dancing and, and, and blessing God, and, and then you go home, and, and you log into your account, and it's, it's, it's red. And you go, well, that's okay, because they just told me today, so I know it's on the way. And next week, it's still red. The week after that, you get your paycheck. Your paycheck is right, but your paycheck is just your pay. You, you've been going paycheck to paycheck. So you get paid, but now you got to pay all the stuff that's past due. And it, you, you all understand what I'm saying? And then all of a sudden, <laughs> your whole paycheck was spent <laughs> before you got it. Any, anybody ever been to where you get a paycheck, but even that ain't enough to still cover everything? And I, I, I've heard somebody say, Pastor, listen, I, I, I know you, you, you looking at the tithes and stuff, and uh, I wish I could. Believe me, Pastor, I want to do it. I want to pay my tithes, but you don't understand what my account look like. I said, your account look like what my account look like. The Bible says that we don't serve a Christ who don't understand our own sorrows. Jesus had a treasurer. And he said, he just asked a question in here. Uh, do we got enough money to cover the cost? He said, man, we got 200 penny worth, but what is that for all of these people? In other words, our money ain't enough to do with what the need is. 
But I do remember God says, I will supply all of your needs according to my riches. So God is saying, Alonzo, I don't need you to pay for it. I need you to believe for it. So I'm not, I'm not worried about the money, but the prophecies keep coming in that God is going to do all of this. But there's a scripture, Lord, and, and, and the Bible says hope delayed makes one sorrowful. I, 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 don't, I don't feel like just standing here. Y'all okay if I move? Can, 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 I, can I? Hope deferred makes one sorry. You all, the first time that I, the, the first time that I, I heard that scripture, I was working at the USDA, and every morning I got up, I woke up with a headache because I hated being there. I hated the place. I knew that I was, I was destined for more, that I was worth more than, than what they were trying to pay me. They told me that, you know, this is my salary. How many people are in, in here is on a fixed income? Anybody on a fixed income? See, some people think when I say fixed income, I just heard somebody say, you mean like retirement? Social Security, disability, but how many of you all have a job where you can only make so much? Then your income is fixed because they determine how much you're going to get paid. I was working on a job where somebody else was determining how much I was worth, and I didn't like that. I knew the day was coming that I was no longer going to have to work for somebody else. I was going to be able to work for myself. I knew that that meant it was going to be more work, but I could determine what I was going to get paid, and I wasn't going to let anybody determine uh, if I was worth it. I'm going to give you my price. Brothers and sisters, if you own a business, I tell my children this. If you own a business, you determine what your price is. And if the people don't like your price, let them go somewhere else. Because if they value your product, they'll pay the price. And most often, we minimize our ability to, to come up by constantly dealing with the same broke-minded people. The rich look for something that's expensive to pay for. They don't they don't want the knockoffs. People believe that if I pay more for something, that it's more valuable. And they feel better about themselves being able to pay for it. Only us people constantly keep looking for the hookup. Can I, can I get the family discount? You got a black people discount? You got a white people discount? Whenever I go into a place, I say, hey, y'all got a discount for black folks? They say, no. You got a discount for white folks? They said, no. I said, you got a discount for Christians? They said, no. I said, how about sinners? I fit three of the four. Most of them don't, but I'm going to ask anyway. Somebody told me, I, 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 was in a, I was in a church in Jacksonville, and this man said that he was going around and he was looking at cars, and he went to the Rolls Royce dealership, and he came in and he asked the man, how much is that car? And the, the gentleman told him, sir, I, I don't mean to offend you, but the people who come here don't ask how much it is. They just say this is the one they want. He said, noted, and he left. And when God blessed him financially, years later, he came back to the same dealership. And I don't know, I can't remember if he said the same guy was there or not, but he walked in and he said, I want that one, and I want it delivered. Now, 
Now, this was a preacher, and I'm not even going to go into the, the, the whole, you know, preachers and, and, and who do what. and I'm, I'm not going to dignify folks with suggesting that as a child of God, you're worth a Rolls Royce. As a child of God, you, you should only be in a Pinto. You should only be in, in a Hyundai. You should only be in a Toyota. You, you ought to feel blessed if you have a Cadillac, if you have a Mercedes or a BMW. You all, BMW for rich people is poverty. I'm, I'm just talking to you. I'm just talking to you right now. <laughs> but when the, when the prophecies come in, and tell you that all God has all of this money coming for you. And every day you look in your account and you wait on it. The, God, somebody comes and they say, God is going to heal you. You've been sick for a long time. And somebody comes and they say, God is going to heal you. And every morning you wake up waiting for the manifestation of the healing. You know what, sometimes I would have preferred that you just didn't say nothing. And when it comes, it comes. Because having me look out the window every day for my blessing to pull up, that's why the Bible says hope deferred makes one sick. When I'm waiting on that blessing, when I'm waiting on what I've been hoping for that don't come, it irritates me. So when I keep getting the words of what Jerusalem is going to be, and every Sunday I pull up and I look at the video in the back and I'm watching the parking lot and I'm waiting for it to fill up. I'm looking at the people as they come through the door. And you all, please don't misunderstand that I don't appreciate you. That this, this is not that I don't love you and don't appreciate you. But I know every last one of us in here is working overtime because right now we're deficient. We got one person doing the job of three or four people. And believe me, I do know that God is going to bless you for your work. I know this because I'm crazy enough to believe that the word of God is true. I believe that. Now, what are we talking about, though, today? I'm looking at what God is calling us to do. And in my mind, somebody said it this way, in my mind's eye. In my mind's eye, I see what God is saying to do. But it don't look like it can happen. But God is always looking for an opportunity for him to get the glory and not you. And I know how easy it is for us to get caught up in the numbers because if I had all of the people and I had all of the money that I can say we did this. Sometimes God don't mind you saying we did. Because I've told you, according to the scriptures, there are some things that God says I want you to do. The Bible says if you shall meditate on this book of the law, to meditate on it day and night, then you will make your way prosperous. And you will have good success. There are some things God is saying I want you to do it. But even with you doing it, you need to keep in mind that he's saying, remember that I gave you the power to do it. So even though you did it, don't get the big head on the you part. Remember that I'm allowing everything. But God is saying, I want to get the glory because 
The Bible says, let your light so shine so that men and women could see your good work. But God says, I want to get the glory. And Alonzo, there are certain people who need different things. Some churches need to have a lot of people so that they can do this, that, and the other because I got them on a particular mission. But I need you not to, to balance or gauge your success by somebody else's metrics. It's easy for us. Matter of fact, all of us compare ourselves to other people. Everything we do is a comparison on what they got. You don't know if you made it until you get something that somebody else got who made it. You... I remember when I was growing up, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get Nikes and Adidas and and whatever. Uh, th- there was a a brand called Pro Wings. That Pro Wings brand was was made by a company called Payless, and Payless had shoes that looked just like, but they weren't. Had you know high tops had the 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 everything looked the same. It just did where the name went, you know. It just and and I don't care how much they looked like it. Everybody could tell when yours wasn't. I don't even know. I'm blocking it out because it, uh, I, yeah, yeah, I, I, I heard I was trying not to. Thank you for <laughs> echoing it. You all, I, I, I developed a complex going back and forth to school with all of the, the quote unquote friends of mine who had the Nike and the Reeboks and, and the, uh, the, I mean, even. What cost a lot of money now was cheap then. I I, I could get some Chuck Taylors, but I you know we, we Chuck Taylors was sold at Kmart, you know the Converse All Stars for fifteen ninety nine, and my mama said, "What well, you don't need that?" And 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 look how flimsy they is. You need shoes that got good soles. Real thick soles, you know, cushion that'll last long. You know, she bought us the pants that was this extra long and would put all the cuffs in them so that, you know, like the children of Israel, my pants would grow with me. And then as I got older, she would uncuff them and then iron them out, but everybody saw where the cuff was. But, but but look at you right now. You are spending money based on what somebody else is wearing. Your, your hairdos is based on what you saw at the Grammys. Different people step off the bus on the NBA players and, and based on what they're wearing, if when, when Michelle Obama was in office, she would name the person who did her dresses and their stuff would fly off of the shelves. When Oprah says, this is a book that I'm reading, that book sells out. Because everybody wants to do what somebody else is doing. So when I look at Jerusalem and I'm saying, Jerusalem ain't doing what other people are doing, and God says, I don't need Jerusalem to do what other people are doing. I need Jerusalem to do what Jerusalem is doing. And Alonzo, it it seems like no matter how much you say you understand, we can make our mouths say anything. But God knows really what's in your heart. And he says, many have honored me with their mouth, but their hearts are far from me. Alonzo, it, it seems like 
You just don't believe fat meat greasy until I show you. So you keep saying it, and you all, I'm, I'm, I'm in a place where I'm, I'm no different than you. And I have to sit and I say, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. I have to be honest. I, I can't, there's no reason for me to sit here and lie to you. I don't profit anything by lying to you. So here this lady is. Here this lady is. And Elijah is sitting by the brook. And the Bible says the brook dried up. But the Bible says this. You have to go back and understand what, what's going on here. Elijah have already called down a famine. And he didn't call God's word. He told the king, by my word, this is what God is going to do. In other words, whatever I say, God going to back it. Y'all, you got to be a heavy hitter to, 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 to just walk in and say, I don't know what God is saying, but I know what I'm saying, and God going to do whatever I say. <laughs> Man, you... You got a pair when you just walk in and say, I'm going to say this and God going to do whatever I say. But that, that says there, there, there's some confidence, there's some prayer, there's, there's been some communication, there's an agreement. When you done talk to God enough to where he done gave you the okay. See, I, I love it when the Secretary of State goes overseas. And he or she walks into the place, and everybody stand and clap. They don't really care who the Secretary of State is. But the Secretary of State comes with the full authority of the President of the United States. So as an ambassador, whatever I say, he going to back it up. He gave me the checkbook and told me, write what you want. So when I come in, you need to talk to me like you understand who I'm is. You understand what I'm saying? I know you don't really care for me, but you know that I can make your life good or I can make it bad. So God spoke to Elijah and told Elijah, say what you want. And he said, it ain't going to be no rain for a period of three years. By my words, it ain't going to rain. And, and until I say so. <coughs> so God tells him, go and sit by the brook. And while he's sitting by the brook, he says, I'm going to feed you. So he has the ravens to come and bring him bread and meat in the morning and then the evening. And then he says, and right here, you, you stay by the brook. The brook is going to give you water. After a while, the Bible says the brook dried up. And then it says because there was no rain. <laughs> well, we know ain't no rain. But let me tell you something. That ain't why the brook dried up. <laughs> because if this man can call water to stop, then he can call water to flow. And if birds is bringing him his meals like their waiters and waitresses, is it really too hard for God to bring him a cup of water too? <laughs> but what he said was, there's a woman that's in need. And she needs you to be there because her blessings are going to flow through you. He said, now I've already commanded her to take care of you. So I, how many of you all carry the blessings of God that somebody is waiting on you to leave your brook so that you can go and make it flow for them? So God sends him, and the Bible says, and the woman was there. In other words, uh, when he got there, he knew that it had to be the voice of God because what God told him showed up when he got there. So the woman was there. And the woman is there and, and she's looking for sticks. And he tells the woman, hey, 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 uh, lady, ma'am, mother, miss, sweetheart, do, do me a favor. Can you... Uh, can you go get me a little bit of water? I'm, I'm kind of parched. I, you know, I was down here by the brook with no water there. I didn't came all the way out here to 
he didn't say this, but, you know, I came out here to see you. Do me a favor. Go get me some water. She in the middle of picking up her sticks. And she look at him. <laughs> I know I'm just a lady. And, and I, I figured you demand that you just walk up to me and stop me from what I'm doing to go fetch you some water. But uh, right on. Okay. She go to get him some water. He said, oh, by the way. While you on your way to get some water, also get me some bread. She said, hold on now, wait. See, see, you just done went too far. Um, man, sir, Mr. Broham, um, let, as your Lord lives, oh, so you must know who my God is then. Keep in mind now, the Bible says she has already been instructed to sustain him. But even though God told her that, you would think she would say, man, come on with the instructions. Whatever you got, I'm ready. But she tells him, hey, man, I'm, I'm here just getting two sticks. I don't need a big bonfire because I, I ain't got that much to cook. I need two sticks because I only got a handful just enough to fit into my hand and a little bit of oil that I can mix it in with. And I'm going to make a little piece of cornbread and then I'm going to break it and I'm going to take a piece and I'm going to give my son a piece. And this is going to be our last supper. I'm going to eat this and then I'm just going to wait for death. But then I'm going to give the other piece to my son and wait to watch him die too. Because that's all I got. He said, right on, I heard you. Good, great. Do me a favor. Why are you going to do that? Go ahead and do that, but um, give me some first. This leads me to believe that she wouldn't a real black sister because I believe most of you all if I had said to come you know if I came to you and I said hey uh, I know you got six dollars left in your in your pocket and you just told me that you finna go and get this happy meal and uh, you gonna get a burger you gonna give them the fries Y'all going to split the soda and then y'all going to die. And then I tell you, that's cool, but give me some of your burger and one of their little nuggets and fries and stuff. Let me have the first sip, you know. And you can have it back. Oh, I know y'all would be in y'all feelings. See, that's, that's what's wrong with the church right now. Preacher always trying to take something. I remember growing up when, when, when you would invite the preachers over to your house for, for dinner. My mama used to say stuff about, you know, when, when, when my granny and all of them would invite the preachers over and then they would make the kids sit back and they would feed the preacher first. <laughs> preacher sitting there with the chicken leg. Y'all, we hungry. Boy, he done, he done got the breast, at, he done took the two best parts. And after he get to eat, then everybody else didn't understand it, and I don't even think they even understood the significance of what they were doing. But the idea was, Matthew 6, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, Put God first, the preacher represented the God in the land. So I'm going to give God first, and when I do that, I know he's going to supply the need. She said, I'm going to eat this, and me and my son are going to die. And he said, I understand what you're saying. 
But then, not only did he tell her, but he gave her the explanation afterwards. Give it to me first, and this is what I'm going to do for you. As my God does live, you won't have a need after this. Now, we have, we have this scenario. We have the scenario of the two fish and the five loaves. Everybody knows how, th how that whole thing planned out. Everybody remember the two fish and the five loaves and the feeding the 5,000 besides the women and children. Now, the, the whole math thing really doesn't matter because it doesn't matter if God fed 5,000 with two fish and five loaves or if he fed 15,000. Either way, it's still a miracle, right? So, so for us to do the math and say that there was more women and children than there was men doesn't really matter, but it's, I have to mention it. But let's look at another story. 1030, all right, all right, Jesus, help me. Now, can, can, I, can, can, I, can I be real transparent with you? A lot of times when I'm asking God, what am I giving the people? What I'm really asking God is, Lord, what can you give me? Because even though I'm preaching to you, y'all don't understand. I'm preaching to me. Because I'm, I'm feeling some kind of way, but God helps me in his word to feel better. And again, it's not about my feelings. Will I walk by the faith or will I walk by sight? Will I move by my feelings? You all, if I was moving by my feelings, I'd still be in the office right now. I wouldn't have came out. I ain't feeling it. But I, I the Amplified, 2 Kings chapter 4, we're going to read this from the Amplified version. This is the woman who's in a predicament right now. She has a debt that her husband made, but her husband has died. And because she couldn't pay the debt, the law said, whatever you have, I can come and get. And if you don't have anything that's of value, I can take the people. I can take your children. And basically, they become slaves until you can pay off the debt. And once those debts have been paid off, then you can have your kids back. Or if it takes over a certain amount of time, you all have to look at and study Jubilee, what it means, how they restore. And if we've been through so many Jubilees and you still haven't paid back, then you are freed from the debt after a certain amount of time. But how many people want to see their kids sold into slavery to cover a debt? I know some of y'all probably would because y'all ain't, ain't y'all be in a hurry to get rid of y'all kids. I didn't look up at nobody, so don't, don't, don't wonder if I'm talking about you. If you're wondering if I'm talking about you, then maybe I am. Just because you're wondering. Never mind. Uh, 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1. Now, one of the wives of a man of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha for help saying, your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant reverently feared the Lord. But the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves in payment for the loan. Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have of value in the house? She says, your maidservant has nothing in the house except a small jar of olive oil. Let me stop right there. When God asks you what you got, don't make it insignificant. When God asks you what do you have, don't make what you have to be insignificant. Anything that you got minus your kids costs something. You bought it. And if you bought it, somebody else will buy it. But it's used. There's consignment shops all over the place. 
There's a whole lot of people who got a hustle right now of selling out of their closet. They take pictures, they, they upload it, and they sell it all over the place, making hundreds, thousands of dollars resale. You might think that what you have is not worth anything. But God took dirt. Okay. She said, I have nothing in the house except a small jar of olive oil. The olive oil, you all have to understand, represents the spirit of God. The olive oil represents the anointing of God. And if you have a small anointing, know that God can use it. Somebody said, well, <laughs> the little drummer boy said, all I have is my drum. And I, I, I'll just take the drum because that's all I have. Brothers and sisters, sometimes all you have is a song. But sing your song. Lord, I don't have anything of value. But what I do have is my service will serve. Serve with it. Serve good. The prophet said to her, go and borrow some containers from all of your neighbors. Empty containers and not just a few. Then you shall go in and shut the door behind you and your sons and pour out the oil you have into all of these containers and you shall set aside each one when it is full. So she left him and shut the door behind her and her sons and they were bringing her the containers as she poured the oil. When all the containers were all full, she said to her son, bring me another container and he said to her, there is not a one left. Then, then, when there was nothing left to put it in, the oil stopped. Do anybody see, does anybody have the, the, the amplified version in front of them? It says the oil stopped. What does it say there? Multiplying. God says, be fruitful and multiply. Sometimes you see the words addition. Sometimes you see the word multiplication. God is saying, I'm going to add. Then she came and told the man of God, and, and he said to her, go and sell the oil and pay off your debt. And you and your sons live on the rest. God ain't just trying to give you enough. God says, if you will trust me with just the little bit that you got, and know that I'm not in the, I'm, I'm, my job is not to waste. God is not wasting anything. The oil could have kept flowing. The oil knew when to stop because there was nothing left to put it in. Many of you all are trying to put a whole lot of stuff into containers that ain't worth it. You all are trying to put a, a, a million dollars in a $10 cup. You need to understand the value of what you start with. So that you understand what it can be when you end with it. If you will be faithful over a few, then I can rake you rulers over the many. Now, she had oil. The little boy gave them, somebody said two fish and five loaves. Today we would say maybe two sardines and a couple of crackers. The other lady had a little meal and a little oil. So I want you to know, it don't matter what you have. 
If you got fish, bring the fish. If you got oil, bring the oil. If you got meal, bring the meal. Luke 6 and 38 says, give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measures pressed down, shaken together, and running over. We've asked some of you all to give. Sister, you gave your talent. You gave your voice. You gave, you, you, what do I need? You stand and you talk to the people and you give them what thus said the Lord have given to you through Lady Adams. And God will bless what you've given. We've asked, uh, uh, I, I said that I wanted, uh, I've asked different people to do different things. And this week we started asking people, are you willing to make a covenant with God and Jerusalem that you will follow leadership? That's one of the questions for all of you all who haven't been uh, in the meeting yet. Will you follow God and will you follow Jerusalem's leadership? Now, in saying that, you all... I, there, there's a humility part where I, I'm, I'm not trying to be the HNIC, but it is what it is, and, and that's where God put me. I'm not going to I'm, I'm, I'm not going to apologize for where God put me. But when I say, "Will you follow Jerusalem leadership?" What I'm asking is, "Will you follow me?" <laughs> now, again, I always put God first. Will you follow God, and then me? Me following him. With what, with what I'm asking you to do, I know many of you all are saying, Pastor, we don't have very much. And, and, and I have someone who, who comes to me frequently, and, and they always start off with this. Now listen, I ain't got a whole lot of money. But such as I have, I give it to you. And, and pastor, sometimes in reality, I, I can't give it, but I can, I can loan it to you. To the best of my ability, whatever I got is, is, is yours, whether it's, it's, it's given or if it's loaned or, or whatever, but I make it available. You all, I believe that because of those hearts, give and it shall be given. Listen, let, let, let me take you to, to the last scripture. Mark chapter 10, verse 28 through 30. King James, Peter says to, to God, talking to Jesus, lo, he said, low. In other words, he said, hey, 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 homeboy. Yo, man, we have left all to follow thee. Now, keep in mind when he said we left all, y'all have to understand the hermeneutics behind this. This man had a thriving business. He was self-employed. And, and y'all remember we don't know a whole lot about all of the disciples, but one thing we do know, Peter was married. Now, I, I don't know if he had kids, but at the very least, I know he was married because there's another scripture later on that says that Jesus and, and the disciples came to town and Peter's mother-in-law was sick unto death. And Jesus healed her. And she began to get up and serve them. So I know that he was married. So Peter had a, 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 a business. And you all have to remember, at the height of his business. How do I know the height of his business? You all got to go back and do your studies. Remember, Jesus asked to use Peter's boat. He said, can, can you, people are oppressing me on the shore. Can I get in your boat and push off so I can preach to the people? 
Peter said, cool, come on, get in. We'll, we'll, we'll back up a little bit so folks can't get to you. So Jesus uses Peter's boat to preach to the people. And after he gets done with his sermon, he looks to Peter and says, okay, I done borrowed your boat. What can I do for you? Because God don't ask you to do nothing that he ain't ready to pay you. See, I said God won't ask you to do anything that he is not ready when he asks you to do it to pay you. So if God comes to you, back up. If Alonzo Jr. comes to you and asks you to do something, understand God is asking you to do something and he's ready to pay you. <laughs> so Jesus asked Peter, what can I do for you? I see that you are, you are a fisherman. Let's go out, get you some, get you some fish. Get you some money, because that's where your money come from. Your money come from your fish. Peter said, man, listen, you do your thing. I do my thing. Your thing is preaching to the people. Keep preaching. I'm a fisherman. I've been out here all night fishing. We ain't caught nothing. Jesus looks at him and said, cast your net over here. Peter says, nevertheless, at your word, I believe you to be a man of God. So at your word, I'm going to cast it. I'm not saying we're going to get nothing. But I'm at least going to try it. The Bible says he put his net down, and when he went to draw it up, it was so much fish that the nets began to break. So then he called over some other smaller boats and says, y'all help me. I can't lift this by myself. And he filled his boat until the boat began to sink. And then filled up the other boats because they came to help to do the word of God. So they got blessed too just because they was in the right place at the right time. Now, I have to wonder how much was that fish worth that filled up the boats. He done had, y'all, he just came back now, can barely move the boat because the boat is ready to sink. I got that scripture, Bishop. Hold on a minute. Don't, don't, don't get ahead of me. He looks at Jesus and he says, what do I need to do? <laughs> Ice-T and the original gangster said, what must I do to be down? <laughs> Jesus says, Follow me. I know you just made the biggest score of your life. I know you just hit the biggest deal of your life. I know you just made the most money that you ever made in one night legally. In your life, leave it and come follow me. So now, now that's Peter who says, <laughs> hey man, we left everything to follow you. And Jesus answered and said, verily, truly, I say to you, there is no man that have left house or brothers or sisters 
or a father or a mother or a wife or children or land for my sake and the gospels. But he shall receive 100 fold, 100 times multiply in this time, in this time. I'm not saying when you die and you get to heaven, I'm going to give you a big house there, but on this side. Houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, land. With persecution. In other words, when, when, when God starts blessing you, people are going to start hating on you. That's part of the package. There's going to be some suffering. There's going to be some heartaches. You're going to lose some friends. You're going to lose some family. You all there... There's a lot of people who I'm related to. Some of you all, and, and, and just understand where I'm going with this. Some of you all have been to my house. But there are some family members, close family members and distant family members, who not only have not been to my house, don't even know where I live, and won't get an invitation because we live different lives. There are, some th there are some of my family who pray against me. There are some people right now in my family who pray that Jerusalem fell because they want it to be a reflection on me. So I've understand that I've had to separate myself. You all, that hurts. But I understand it's part of the packet. I, 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 I have to believe that God is doing what he's saying doing. Hey, stop there. Thank you. Thank God for the village. This is what we do together. Now, if God is blessing us together, 100-fold, so if everybody, I, I, I don't know what you're driving, I don't know where you live, but he says, in this lifetime, if you give whatever I'm asking you to give for the gospel's sake, you all, this is not my word. Again, this, this is the word of God. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I don't, I see God doing stuff and I'm saying, <laughs> Lord, I, I can't explain you to nobody, but I, I kind of see how you be working. Parents, after a while, come Christmas time, kids start seeing y'all move certain ways, and they go, I know you're up to something. I don't, I don't know exactly what you're doing, but I know you're up to something. Mama, did y'all get me already? Girl, what you talking about? Ain't got you nothing. <laughs> y'all ever sit your kids down and go, listen, this is going to be a really rough, a rough one this year. Things have been kind of tight, and haven't been able to really do what we wanted to do. Y'all done already been shopping. Y'all got everything underneath. I mean, y'all are laying on your mattress like this because y'all got stuff underneath the mattress. That's Y'all done already did it. But you, you setting them up. I'm seeing God doing different things right now, and I'm like, Lord, you up to something. And, and God is only up to good stuff. He's only up to good stuff. So I know that if he's up to something, even, this is the part that God says, I just don't understand you, Alonzo. I'm, I'm going to be, this, this, I'm talking to you now, all right? Alonzo, if you know that I'm up to something, and you know that I'm only up to good, why are you tripping? Why are you worried? Why are you telling them that you know that what father who asked his son for a, uh, a, a fish would give him a serpent? That it, if, if you, being an earthly father, know how to give good things, what more will your heavenly father? Then why are you tripping on me like you don't know what I'm going to do? I 
I'm saying, yeah, God, but. He said, but? Really? Really? I'm saying, Lord, these people looking at me. I'm telling y'all the truth. See, see right now, every last one of y'all right now looking at me. <laughs> you waiting to see what he going to do. Because when it all, it all rises and falls on me. And that's a whole lot when every Sunday I got to stand right here and look at all y'all look at me. And I'm saying, Lord, I'm telling them that this is what we going to do because you said this is what we going to do. But they looking at me right now. They ain't looking at you. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Y'all say all the right things. If I ask right now who believed that God sent me, y'all going to raise your hand and all of that. But, but I just said up here. 40 minutes ago, Lord, I'm going to be quiet so that they can hear you. But y'all going to go home and say, Pastor said. Don't nobody ever leave here and say, God said this today. Y'all said, Pastor said. So I'm looking at him. You are the same Elijah. The same Elijah. Keep reading in the same book after he helped the lady. He goes to another city, and in this city, this woman is, is, is building him a house onto her house so that he has a place to stay. She says, I want to be blessed by the association. Whenever you come to town, please live here, because if you live here, God follows you. I want God in this house. So the prophet says to her, cool, what can I do for you? She said, hey, man, I'm set. This lady had money. Remember, she just said, I'm going to build you a room onto the house so that when you come through, you come through here often. He said, well, what can I do? Man, me and my husband, <laughs> we loaded. So he asked his servant, what can I do for her? He said, well, they ain't got no kids. So he goes to the lady. He said, hey, y'all ain't got no chillings. By this time of life next year, you'll have a son. She said, oh, dog, oh, man, no, no, man. Don't, don't, don't get my hopes up. Me and my husband been trying to have some chillings for a long time, preacher. Don't. Listen, I, didn't, I, I told you I didn't need nothing, so. Please, don't get my hopes up. In nine months, she had a baby. Now, that, 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 that ain't the part of the story I'm trying to get to you. That boy grew up and one day came to his mama and said, Mama, I don't feel good. My, my head is pounding. His daddy told their servants, take the boy to his mama Bible says he died she took that boy to the room that she built for the preacher and laid him on the bed and told her husband get me a horse and a chariot and I need a driver I'm finna go to the preacher and she went to the preacher and told the preacher first of all the preacher saw her on the way and he said, ain't that the Shunammite woman? Ain't that the chick from back there? Ain't that the woman I told her she's going to have a kid? He said, yeah. He said, what's she doing? She, she in a hurry. She got off the horse or out of the carriage. And he said, hey, woman, is all well? She looked at him. She said, all is well. Faith spoke out before her situation could take over. She said, you gave me a son. That boy is in your room dead. I need you to do something about that. Elijah is feeling some kind of way. He's thinking all the way back to the room because he gets to the room and the Bible says, he looks at God and says, why? Have you done this to me? Because she didn't say, 
God gave me this boy. She said, you gave me this boy. So now he's talking to God and saying, you better do something about what I look like right now. So don't misunderstand what I'm telling you how I'm feeling when I tell God, you got to do something about how they're looking at me right now. God says, have I ever let you down? When you needed a house, boy, did I give it to you? Yes, yes, sir, you did. When you lost that house that you lied about in order to get it, did I get you another one? Yes, sir, yes, sir you did. Did I take your minimum wage job because I didn't let you go to Boeing. I let you go to Hux as a nighttime shift manager for $8.50 an hour. Did I get you a house with that? Yes, sir, you did. Did I take that and still get you another house to rent that was double the size? Yes, sir, you did. When you was hiding your truck in the garage so that they wouldn't take it, did I pay it off? Yes, sir, you did. When you said you wanted a Cadillac, did I take you and get you one? Yes, sir, you did. After I got you that Cadillac and you said you wanted a bigger, newer one, did I get you one? Yes, sir, you did. After you lost all of those houses in the foreclosure and the bankruptcy, and they said you wouldn't be able to buy nothing, did I let you buy a house in your name? Yes, sir. You did. You was talking about the low interest rate that you got. But do you think if they raise the interest rate three times as much that I still won't take care of it? Can you all take the little bit that you got and trust God with it? God took the rich woman who built onto her house and then he took another woman who didn't have anything because he says I have no respect of person if you are willing to give it God has proclaimed that he will multiply it. No matter what it is that he asks you for, be willing to give it. There are some testimonies on the way. The, the lady from, from NARAB, Miss Kelly Butler, the president of the National Association of Real Estate Brokers, called me and said, Pastor, I'm, I'm ready to come back. I'm ready to bring the team back. Since I was with you the last time, our team has tripled, and um, we are ready. I said, well, there are people in the congregation who's been calling and who's working. She said, well, I I'm not familiar with. I said, well, there's one I want you to get familiar with, and I'm going to send you their information, and I want you to contact them because I, I want them to have a house. Somebody else reached out to me, I believe it was yesterday, maybe it was yesterday. Uh, if it wasn't yesterday, it was Friday, and they said, Pastor, I thought that I didn't qualify for a house, but I contacted the people that you told me to contact from NARAB, and they got me pre-qualified for a house. I'm looking now. Some of those same people are the ones who came and said, Pastor, whatever you need from me, I got it. 
whatever you want me to give, whatever I have, such as I have, I give unto you. What do you have that you think is insignificant? Many of you all think that I don't, I don't have anything worthy enough to give. How many of you all got time? How many of you all have a voice? I'm saying this is what I desire. I'm not saying God desires this. I'm saying I desire. I want my choir and my praise team back. Some of y'all can sing. You can at least hum good. But it takes a commitment. Some of you all don't want to be committed. Don't be telling. They tell it. <laughs> I love it. Listen, I understand. I understand that I'm getting ready to ask a lot from a few. But I don't see nowhere in the scriptures where God didn't do the same. He asked a lot from a few. But I'll show you in every scenario where he asked a lot from a few to those he blessed a lot. God is getting ready to bless you in accordance to if you sow sparingly. He didn't say you wasn't going to reap. You will reap, but you'll reap sparingly. But if you sow bountifully, because I'm getting ready to ask some of you all to do one, two, three, four things. Because I, you're who I got to work with. And I'm not saying that in a negative way like, like y'all ain't good enough to work with. I'm saying, now there are some people, you all, y'all be praying for Sister uh, Rachel and her baby and, and, and uh, Earlene and, and, and Betty. That whole family has been hit with COVID again. So I'm, I'm not talking about those who, who are not here, you know, as, as if. I don't want nobody, see, pastor said that because y'all wouldn't hear. He said only us. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to keep you all from, from putting your foot in your mouth early. But I'm getting ready to start asking because once again, God done start putting some things in place. God done start moving some things. God is saying, Alonzo, I'm requiring some things of you. You all, I'm in here now on Tuesday night on my knees because I can't afford not to be. I ain't, I've been talking about prayer meeting. I ain't been in the prayer meeting. I've been using prayer meeting time to get ready for Bible study. God says, oh, no, times are changing. I need you to start praying. So I know something is happening. God is saying, are, are you ready? Are you ready? to give what you got. Give what you got and know that my word is not on the line. Although I know y'all gonna hold me accountable. I already know this. So, I'm finna pass the buck. Y'all looking at me? I'm looking at him. Y'all waiting for me? I'm telling him I'm waiting on him. And if he don't do nothing, I'm going to look at y'all and I'm going to say, he ain't do nothing. You all, I wanted to retire in Jacksonville where I was at. I'm a Navy dude. I love the water. I wanted to retire in a military town. As a military man, I could have basically, if all things being equal, could have gotten whatever job I wanted in the military town who support military people. And I could have stayed in the nice house that I had built and be right there on the beach. God told me to come right back to this God-forsaken uh, 20 degree one day, 60 degree the next, sleet, snow, hail, big thunder booms in the middle of the winter. I have given up houses, I have given up land, 
I have given up brothers and sisters. And God says, in this lifetime, you're going to receive 100-fold. I'm calling it. I believe it. I came because I'm doing what I believe. I'm not asking you all to do no more than I am. The doors of the church is open. Uh, do we have any, any visitors? No. Well, well, don't worry about putting up no chairs. For those who are watching, brothers and sisters, for those who are watching, if you don't have a church home and, and you're looking for a church home, then, then Jerusalem would love to be that church for you, uh, especially if you're local. You all, there are still people, there are, there are other churches who said that we are imp improving our uh, social media presence so that we can have members from out of town. You all, I just, this is my opinion, and I'm not saying anything against those churches, but God told me, according to the word, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. If, if, if you all are local and you live here and you, you need a church home, then we want you to be here with us. But if you live somewhere else, we would love for you to, to get to know Jesus in the pardon of your sin. We would love to introduce you to Christ and, and, and as we teach you. But what we plan on doing is finding you a local church home. You all, I, I would love to keep all of the people who, who are, we, we got people in different states. We got, now, we got people in other countries who follow us, who watch but I would be a hypocrite if I kept them when the Bible says go to a local assembly. You all, and they pay tithes. But do I think God won't replace the money if we do it his way? First of all, when I was in Florida and I was part of those other churches, I sent my tithes home. Every two weeks, it was $425.26. Every two weeks. The first and the 15th is when the military got paid. Every two weeks, I sent that home. But do you know I was given more than that in offerings to the churches that I was? Why? Because I was being blessed. So... If God allows those people to go to a local church, that won't stop them from giving an offering. And it won't stop you either. <sighs> Reach out to us, for those who are watching, if you, if you would like to become a part of Jerusalem until we can find you a church home where you're at. Reach out to us. Send us a message. You don't have to put it in the, in the big, you know, whatever you, you can send us a message directly and uh, we will get with you we will pray with you and uh, hopefully um, if we need to if someone is coming as candidate for baptism because you haven't received Christ I will see to it personally that you do get baptized and then we will work to connect you with a local body but we're going to do what God is calling us to do but Jerusalem, I need you all to get ready. I need you all to get ready. And, and I know that there's going to be some opportunities where it's going to look like because Satan is going to try to put up some blocks. I'm calling a complete healing on my wife because I know Satan is trying to use her When we met with Bishop Thompson and we sat down with him and his wife and Lady Thompson said, when I was going through the chemo, my hair was literally on fire and I, the hair was burning and I told him, cut it off, cut it because it's burning my scalp. He cut it all off. You all, she showed up at the restaurant and the hair was past her shoulders. And she said, this is one year's growth. From, from, I mean, slick to past her shoulders. She told her, she said, baby, don't worry about your hair.
God is getting ready to do some things. I just need you all to trust. Trust God and trust me. And understand that I'm only, I'm not going to beg you all. I'm going to ask, and you'll either say yes or no. And if you say no, I'm going to go on. But understand that I'm not, I'm, <laughs> I was listening to, we see that there is none, but yet there is room. I was, thank you all, my brothers, I appreciate you. You all, I was listening to Bishop Jakes last night. He said, pastors, you all are getting upset with your members when you should be getting upset with yourself. He said, the reason why you're getting upset with them is because you have put so much into them and you're expecting to get back what you put in. He said, but stop trying to pour a gallon into a cup. I'm spending a lot of time on people who ain't spending time on me. And I'm going to stop doing it. And that don't mean I don't love you, but I'm going to give you a cup worth because that's all you can hold. You remember we talked some time ago about milk or meat? I can't feed you. He says, I'm going to give you pastors according to my own heart who will feed you. If I'm shoving meat down your throat and, and you throwing up, it ain't your fault. I'm the chef. I'm a good chef too, ain't I, bro? I know it. Yeah. Listen, I love you all. I'm excited, but I got to tell you the truth. I'm also nervous because I'm asking God, Lord, make sure that I'm ready. Help me to be ready. Don't let me get beside myself. You all, I, I, I have pride issues. The military made me, you know, you took, that was something that they instilled in us. It's hard to, to, to undo what you've been living your whole life. But I know God has a purpose with that too. I know a lot of you all have been told that you ain't worth nothing your whole life. So it's hard for you to think that God is going to use you in that manner, but God is breaking a whole lot of, he's breaking chains there, he's breaking chains here. God is getting ready to do some things. I'm waiting for what God is getting ready to do. Let us stand. Oh, Jesus. Um, Whatever you are having a problem with, give that problem to God. But don't pull that problem from out of his presence and then ask him to work on it. If your kid is sick and they tell you that your kid needs, uh, you know, medication and all of that, and then you voluntarily sign them out of the hospital and then hold the doctor accountable for them being sick. He can't work on them if you won't leave them in his care. Many of you all got some situations and you asking God to work on it, but then you won't leave him in his care. You're allowing other things to take priority. God says, I understand, and I, I, I'll let you continue to do it your way, but I'm not going to be held accountable. I won't be responsible. Take that for what it's worth. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you. Lord, I, not we. I, they might. I don't know. I can't speak for them, but I do. I thank you. Lord, I, I could continue to preach because I need more of it. But I, I, I thank you that you gave us what you gave us on today. Lord, I pray that you would do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to the power that works within us. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your spirit. I thank you for your anointing. God, I thank you that the anointing can change how I feel. I didn't feel like it in the beginning, but God, I thank you that I feel better. 
I thank you that I've emptied myself and I've allowed you to come in and, and take residence where there was doubt, where there was anger, where there was resentment, uh, um, all of these things, God, all the anxieties. And I know that you said that we shouldn't be anxious, but that's on the, that's, that's on the, the, the human side. But I thank you that you've made me more than human. I thank you that your people here are more than human. I thank you for those who have already begun to give. Some have already given without me asking. They volunteered. God, you said some 30, some 60, some 100. I know some people are going to get above above because they started it. We just thank you. We, we give you all the blessings, all the glory, all the honor. Lord, I'm asking you right now to prepare us as we get ready to make our way down to Leonard. They're asking something from us, Lord. I, I'm getting ready to lose 25% of my choir. But I'm asking, Lord, if, if, it's, if, if, if it's possible, if those other three can still go with me, that you would use those three. Lord, if you can use anything, you can use me. Lord, we give you all the praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.